so this is for the evaluation of uh, plasticity um, and we're going to use the p, st uh, the p structure, the spec structure, which of course you would then turn into the p structure. First we've got S for supporting evidence and there's lots of different supporting evidence. You'd only need to choose one of these um, pieces of research. Uh, there's Maguire who studied taxi drivers and found that the um, hippocampus uh, in taxi drivers was much larger than in other areas, uh, in other people with other roles and that was thought to be believed because they had to learn a lot of information for something called the knowledge to help them drive around London they have to pass something called the knowledge uh, a test and uh, so they were found there were significant differences in the brains of taxi drivers and um, people who weren't taxi drivers and they thought that was because of experience that they'd had in the environment that's altered their behavior so of course that one's supporting then you've got the next person Dragansky who looked at medical students and found that um, it was repeat, um, repeated um, measures, design, so before and after uh, they did research and they found that the hippocampus and the parietal cortex had, were, had grown in size because of course in medical school and any, any kind of education lots and lots of new information is learned and that's added in, um, so that's another one and, they, and then there was another piece of research which suggests that the parietal cortex uh, the parietal cortex um, was much larger in people who were bilingual as well because they knew two different languages. Okay, So you could use two of those, you could use one of them in lots of detail, whatever you would like to do to evidence the point. I wouldn't worry about using all three um, unless you felt like you had lots and lots of time and you wanted to give it a go. The practical application is neuro rehabilitation. Um, so up to a certain point um, in there is spontaneous recovery happens so that's automatic kind of natural recovery and then after that we have to put in place some support for neuro rehabilitation so it's usually for people with strokes um, if we know that the brain is at pl plastic and can respond to the environment then it makes it worth us putting some rehabilitation in place whereas if we assume that the brain's um, was static was fixed never grew then there'd be no point in changing the environment in any way because once the brain is damaged it couldn't uh, repair or respond or change so um that in this one you really want to focus on making it clear that it's plasticity a practical application of plasticity which it is still because it's responding to the environment um but you need to link it back to that definition of plasticity otherwise it starts to sound a bit like functional recovery because the same we've, we've used the same point uh, so there's movement therapy and electrical stimulation so movement therapy there's a lovely video on moodle um which you might have seen before of a guy who's um, going through movement therapy for a stroke uh, and he's he used to love to dance so that looking at that so I'd recommend clicking on that and watching it's 30 second long clip and it's a really nice one um, or electrical stimulation so that's where we send electrical impulses to the brain to stimulate the parts of the brain that are, are damaged and not working and we can um, build on those a bit like um, a tense some people might know of tens using tens machines so sending the electrical impulse and making the brain work uh, until it's, it's strong enough to work independently on its own However, there are methodological issues with um, all of the research that's been conducted into plasticity. So if you look at all of the above, they're all quasi-experiments, taxi drivers, medical students, and people who are bilingual. There's no random allocation there, so there are issues with confounding variables, potentially, particularly um, the taxi drivers one, potentially people who want to be taxi drivers. They might naturally have um, a stronger brain or a, an improved hippocampus that um, leads them towards wanting to be a taxi driver. So we're studying a difference that's already there as opposed to a difference that's developed over time because of the environment so almost a biological one instead um, and you know all about brain scans now so a lot of the methodological issues rely on brain scans particularly fMRIs so you could talk about the problems with fMRIs as it says on there I would highly recommend this one having a however it's a nice easy one to have and however there is a contrast to alternative or this one's more like um, opposing evidence so we've got Hunt and Locker um, who found that children with congenital cataracts so a visual they're born with a visual impairment that is um, 
you can operate on and the, the um, cataracts are removed, something in the eye are removed and they are able to see again. They found if that happened before eight weeks then um, the children were able to develop um, sight normally. However, if that operation to remove the cataracts happened after eight weeks then their visual impairment was affected and that would suggest that plasticity isn't infinite, it's fixed at certain points and it would suggest that the plasticity, the uh, visual cortex is plastic up until about eight weeks and then without the correct environment mental stimulus, it, um, the pl it, it's no longer able to develop, so there is a cut-off, almost like a cut-off point for it. Plasticity might imply that it's infinite and unlimited, whereas actually there are some um, time-bound limitations on it, which doesn't fit with our theory of plasticity, so that would be an issue. You've looked at functional recovery, and here are the evaluation points for functional recovery. So there's some supporting evidence of Gabby Gifford, who was um, an American politician who was shot. Uh, and there's, again, there's a video on Moodle of her. She was only able to say the word chicken, so her speech, the fluency of her speech was affected. So you could mention briefly what part of the area of the brain was affected by speech. And gradually with therapy and with support she has been able to improve and her language has been able to develop and there are lots of other similar uh, examples of stroke victims um, and various different people whose um, neurological functions have um, recovered okay so you can uh, say so there's lots of case studies of functional recovery Again, the practical application for functional recovery is neurorehabilitation. So if we know functional recovery happens, um, partly initially through spontaneous recovery, natural recovery that happens automatically, uh, and then when that starts to halt, we, can, um, we know that functional recovery is still possible. We are still able to recover, so we can use movement therapy. Again, please watch that video, and also electrical stimulation, so we stimulate the brain to make it work. A problem is, however, again, it's quasi-experiments or it's case studies. So Gab Gabby Gifford is an example of a case study, or they're quasi-experiments. We're looking, we're comparing, um, for example, stroke victims with a control group. So um, there's a com again issues with confounding variables and looking at functional recovery there. Uh, there is some contrast to alternatives. So this time again, it's more opposing evidence as opposed to an alternative theory. But we've got Albert. Um, Atel found that age did have an impact on plasticity, so it's found that younger children also are on functional recovery. So it's found that as we got older, um, functional recovery was less possible. Whereas when we, if we damaged our brains when we were younger, that functional recovery was more likely. So once again, it just does suggest that there's some individual differences and some limitations on functional recovery. So it's not something that can broad, broadly be explained in everybody there is some um, limitations to it which are the, again the theory of functional recovery that we're discussing doesn't raise those issues so they'd need to factor in individual differences and it's exactly the same with education as well so there are certain environmental things protective or risk factors that make your functional recovery more or less likely to be complete and Schneider found that um, of a sample of um, people who um, had had some kind of neurological damage, uh, two-fifths of those people um, that were recovery, f were recovery free in that sample uh, after 16 years, um, had six, sorry, had 16 years worth of education. So let's try that one again. So the whole sample, all of this sample were made up of people who had neurological, and some kind of neurological condition, some kind of neurological damage, and we were looking at their functional recovery. Of that sample of everybody who'd had some neurological damage, two-fifths of the um, sample that had recovered as disability free uh, free for disability free so had fully recovered for had functional recovery had 16 years worth of education so a huge number of the sample that didn't have any disabilities when they recovered had 16 years worth of education whereas only 10 percent of that sample who were disability free um, had less than 12 years so the more education you have the more likely that you are going to recover from a br from brain damage without any disability without any lasting damage and the less ed education you have the less likely you are to recover from brain damage without uh, any disabilities. So what you're doing currently in A-level is you are protecting, not only you're ensuring lots of different things like hopefully better wages, better quality of life, but you're also ensuring that, not that you ever will, but if you did for any reason get any <laughs> have any brain damage, that you are more likely to recover and not have any laughs, lasting effects, so which, is, uh, which is nice, isn't it? So you get to learn about functional recovery and you can protect your brains as well. Right, thank you very much.